Good morning. Got a quick trick here. I use this to get crazy little bass sounds or resonances in Ableton of just percussion loops and stuff. A little goofy, a little weird, but I like to just kind of mess around with stuff that I find in Ableton to help get weirder sound design. I'm no wizard, but uh, here's how I do it. So first things first, I'm going to grab one of my percussion loops. Ooh, I'll drop it on an audio track. Don't mind that stuff. Second, I grab a Corpus. I love Corpus a lot. It's a resonator in Ableton. It's crazy, it's different than the regular resonator because it has all these options of different resonator types. You can start, I think it starts with beam. On this tune knob, I have it set to D. I usually work in D minor. Admittedly, I transpose around if I want different keys. Easier for me to write on the MIDI roll with it. I, I don't have my piano set up, but my favorite resonator type is definitely pipe. Now you can already hear that it just sounds pretty gnarly. I can play around with this little ball. It's a very quick way to get those metal sounds that I like using. Another thing I like to add is a delay. I turn off the sync. I put it linked. Then you know, short little delay. I like the repitch function because of this. Get those little uh, weird extra resonances and frequency shifting as you uh, change around the time and play with that. So you can automate that throughout a track. If you get something a little bit like this. So we just go like that. Give it a little bit more maybe at the very end. So that's how I get a lot of those little uh, particles coming off of my sounds. It's a trick I use all the time because there's so many uses for it. Pretty much every single sound you could ever use or write or do, you could use this on depending on how you process using the dry wet or the feedback knob. I use it on vocals. I set the feedback a lot further back, but the dry wet, maybe 30% too. The next trick with the corpus right here is getting that tune and tone that you like. I like it because it does make it wide as well. You can use things like limiters. I'm using track limit here to catch the sound, but if you want to break the rules, you just fucking turn shit off. You just blast it. Who cares? Honestly, break the rules. The next trick that I like to use to try and get these metallic little sounds out of Ableton is something that I learned from uh, goats. We got a little rack that is inspired, obviously, by uh, Dank Sauce and his metallic snare. Brilliant video, definitely worth checking out. And it also takes inspiration from uh, a trick I learned from MDX View, absolute goat of a producer. But uh, here we go with that. If I turn this on, you already hear it's kind of crazy. You can probably turn down the input of your limiter. As you can hear, it's kind of going all over the place. You got a lot going on here. So I basically remade it. We have our phaser flanger here. And this has a pitch envelope that we are setting real nice and short. I'm mapping it over to a macro so it's just easier to see for myself. That's giving it that nice little like, king at the very top. It's almost like what you are getting over in this corpus with the uh, algorithm they have set up. But you're doing it yourself. You're kind of putting that in to create that uh, tail at the end of your sound. From there, you can play with the mod, mod frequency, the envelope amount. I keep the frequency relatively high because that keeps that ting that high end fast almost pitch envelope aspect to it the next and this is the real absolute legend of ableton sound design grain delay and uh the different types of delay in ableton obviously i use all the time but this grain delay is kind of crazy because you can get so much out of it so randomly and it's really fun especially if you don't you don't need to know much about it just play with it and get stuff that you like experiment break the rules so grain spray that kind of gives me a lot more to my tail it's cool you can play around with the sequencing of it in your rack frequency you can get the frequency of the grains as they come out of your delay that's the pitch i love the pitch and that was one of the uh, most important things that i got from when i was working with mdx view and that is as you play with the pitch you get these crazy lower end artifacts coming out of your sounds now depending on sound choice you can get these wonderful multi sounds almost out of your piece that you're working on and this is really helpful when i'm producing because it's almost like inspiration i don't have to go through and create those little like uh blips and bleeps i just take one of these loops that i already have made for myself and i can get so much out of it right off the bat from there you can freeze and flatten this or uh, whatever you want, chop it up. Go crazy with it. I do a lot of audio chopping, um, not only with stuff in my production here, in theorem sounds, all that. I also do it with entire beats. 
I can make a video about that later if you are interested. Last thing, and this is from Bang Sauce. I noticed he uses pitch map a lot. It does sound like itself. So using it in tandem with other plugins such as this or in sequence, you know, if I put the corpus after. Regardless, it is a resonator that you can tune. I have it to C chromatic right now. Let's get it on D, natural minor. You hear that it's creating these little almost chords <laughs> out of it as it resonates through. Well, thank you for watching. I'm going to do more walkthroughs of my production. I'd like to be making more videos and such for YouTube. I love learning. I want to give back to people.